Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. So, I've been playing the classic demo quite a bit. Here I am on my level 19 warrior. In this video, I wanted to share my thoughts on classic in general, the demo itself, all of the announcements that we got with BlizzCon, the direction of the game, and just shoot the breeze. For the most part, I'll just be showing my leveling here, so please also excuse the laziness. I usually like to edit more, but I figured it would be cooler to actually see the gameplay. I wanted to wait a few days to let it all set in, which I'm glad I did. I don't know if you guys have been following Classic and the community surrounding it, but it's been a roller coaster for the past few days, I'll tell you what. The hype was at critical mass, then the demo came out, some people played it for 5 minutes and immediately sang its praises and others wrote it off as a failed experiment, and it was the worst thing of all time. Everyone freaked out at the unlimited debuffs, which I'll go into more detail in a bit, and oh my god, if you type slash LFR, the dungeon finder comes up. Oh my god, the smell of my farts are 2% different. Good game, Activision. I personally found it quite entertaining, and I've just been eating some popcorn in the meantime while making my own opinion of things. So, what is my opinion so far? Well, pretty good. It's not perfect. As you may know, I'm part of the crowd that wants as little changes as possible, while still being realistic about it. Like, I don't care that the character select screen looks slightly different, or maybe the rarity of an item is off. Not the stats, just the rarity. Really minor things like that don't bother me, and really, the only major thing I've noticed so far would be sharding, which we'll discuss in a bit. But, as for the actual gameplay, I think it's pretty close to what I remember with the game. Not exact, but pretty close. The best way to explain it is to just go over what they said in their panel, and that's the fact that they're using the modern engine, and I do feel like it is noticeable. They're using the old 1.12 art assets and the old 1.12 data, but the source code is modern because the old 1.12 code still had all of the bugs and exploits and hacks and whatnot that would surely be abused had they used that as well. Plus, throwing away 11 years of optimizations isn't the best practice in terms of game design. It's hard to describe, but if I had to sum it up, I'd say that things are much more responsive in general. The movement seems different, and I can't quite put my finger on an exact reason. People have said that it has to do with the field of view. Because it's wider, it just looks like you're going faster, but you're really not. I think that, combined with the super clean responsiveness with the new engine and servers, it may be where this different feel is coming from. When you press it, it's instantaneous. So, if you're a purist no changes, where do you draw the line? Should the servers emulate some lagginess to better match the original? You see, that's where I draw the line personally, and that would be a bit ridiculous. I do think that people are comparing it to private servers too much. Remember, the real classic World of Warcraft was 04 to 07. Private servers at this point have been out for much longer, but that doesn't make them the staple and how we should be comparing the demo. Real classic was real classic, not these servers where if you slash sit you can proc spell effects, or the ability damages off, or raid bosses reset whenever the server goes down. Something I can 100% say for sure though, is that the regeneration is off. This was something I noticed immediately actually. After exiting combat, your health shoots up at lightning speed compared to how it was in Classic. Now, I can't find any information on this, but I do know that at some point to help newer players, Blizzard buffed health and mana regeneration for everyone under level 6 or so. Newer players were having trouble making it out of the starter zones, so they tried to make it easier on them, but I just don't recall when this happened. Even so though, I'm 99% sure it was only for players under level 6 or so like I said. Maybe level 10? Certainly not all the way up to level 15. Let's just say that as a warrior, you'd always have to carry stacks and stacks of food, because you'd pretty much need one after every single battle. In total, from 15 to 19, I ate maybe 40-ish times because I was just able to go from mob to mob with that super health regeneration. 
So this is definitely different. I chalk it up to it just being the demo personally. I think it's something they're getting plenty of feedback on because it's the first thing you'll notice if you played Classic back then. As for other changes, honestly, I didn't notice much. I know that there are very specific things. I noticed that Blood Rage doesn't put you in combat, which is incorrect, even though the tooltip says it does, so I'll just chalk that up to a bug. I think I recall switching stances triggered a longer global cooldown than it does in the demo. I'm not 100% sure on this one though, so correct me if I'm wrong here. I played a rogue in vanilla, not warrior. I made a warrior in the demo to gauge the difficulty since they were probably the toughest to level, and boy does that still hold true. If you pull even two enemies of your level, forget about it. Hamstring and run, that's all I gotta say. As I recall, rolling for loot was also a bit different. I thought that if something dropped, it showed everyone's rolls exactly when they rolled. It seems like they're using the modern system of only showing your roll and the highest if you lose. And I'm sure there's a lot more low-key stuff like this. I do think that it's minor enough to just chalk it up to it's a level 5 demo. The release is summer 2019, so there's plenty of time to fix the little things. The next change related thing I want to talk about is sharding, and this is a hot topic right now. I did say in my BlizzCon prediction video that for the most part everything will be the same, but there will be just one or two things that are going to split the community, and that's the case here. Everyone debates it back and forth. As you know, sharding is when there are different instances of zones within your server, not to be confused with cross server, which is across different realms of course. Basically, for those who don't know, Blizzard said that they're considering maybe bringing in sharding for the launch temporarily for the sake of server stability and just having a smoother launch in general. After things calm down, they take it out. You don't share mobs or pickups in Classic, so having thousands of players swarming one zone isn't very ideal in terms of efficiency. So that's their thought process. I actually made a poll for this in another video to gather everyone's thoughts, and here's how it turned out. Split right down the middle pretty much, which I didn't expect. I thought that it was going to be more of a 70-30 deal honestly, so this was very interesting to see. And I think fairly accurate since it's a sample size of nearly 10,000 at the time that this video was made. If you'd like to add your vote, I'll have a link in the description. You know my thoughts on it if you saw a couple videos back. I'm personally part of the no sharding camp, although I totally do see the argument for sharding as well. The main reason why I'm part of that camp for me personally is I unfortunately didn't see the launch of Classic. I was one of the holdouts from Star Wars Galaxies and I only picked up the game in March of 2005, four months after the launch. It was always one of my biggest regrets with the game to not see that crazy launch with every zone just brimming with people rushing to get past each other. Call it morbid curiosity, call it stupid. Personally, I think it would be a legitimate part of the experience, so I lined the no sharding camp. Again though, I do see the other side. If you want a smooth launch, you go with sharding. It's the more sane route, honestly. So, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's not a deal breaker for me. I'm not going to go kicking and screaming and swear off the recreation of possibly the best moment in gaming history for something that's going to be a non-issue in a couple of weeks. That's just me. Please don't bite my head off over it. A lot of people get a little crazy over this stuff, if I'm going to be frank. What I think isn't going to affect Blizzard's decision. They don't care about another one of thousands of YouTubers. I'm not the voice of Classic, nor do I want to be. I just want to play it. Having passion is good, but I think some people just take it a bit too far sometimes, and I'm not even saying towards me. I've been on the internet for a while. I got a pretty thick skin at this point, but when you start to degrade yourself to personal insults to each other, it hurts your argument more than it helps. Just saying. Anyways, another big point of debate is loot sharing. They also announced that they're bringing the current game's loot sharing with Official Classic, 
where you can trade a piece of gear to a party or a raid member within two hours if it was looted to you by accident or whatever. Back then, you actually had to page a GM and sort it out. Initially, I was for this because at first glance, that just sounds like they're removing a step in the process, so no harm done. But then I started thinking about it more, and it was pointed out to me that it might actually have a very big effect. And that's how people can basically team up roles. Like if you're running with three friends, and you have one random, and an item drops that only one of you wants, you and all three of your friends may decide to roll anyway, just to beat out the random. And whoever wins it, trades it to the person that wanted it within that two hour window, effectively allowing people to gang up and multiply the amount of rolls that they have. Now, this was possible in Classic, as far as I recall. You could still page a GM, and have them switch the item to your friend, as long as both parties agree. But it was so inconvenient because you had to make a ticket, wait a few days, you both had to be online, talk to the GM, and so on. So, making this much more convenient also makes it much more appealing to do, which is definitely big. I even consider it bigger than sharding because with that, as they said, it would just be a temporary thing at launch. This loot sharing, however, is throughout the entire stage of the game, so this is also something I think needs addressing. Personally, if you ask me, I think the best solution is to just revert it to the old system with the GM ticket. It certainly serves as a good lesson though that she can't take stuff at face value. Something like this seems so simple and innocent at first, but if you think about it for a second, you uncover this huge gaping flaw that affects the entire game at all stages. So, all this being said, in summary, it's not 100% classic. There are some differences that come because they're using the modern engine, but in the demo's case, I think you can chalk up a lot of it to it just being a demo for levels 15 to 19. You certainly don't want to get caught up in that phase of, eh, it's just a demo, to come on, it's the alpha, to it's just the beta, and then finally, the game just released, chill out guys. Saying it's just a demo doesn't mean that you don't report bugs and don't give feedback. It just means that it's a bit silly to swear off the game entirely. And again, they said that the demo was for feedback, so there's still more to be done. The bigger issues are things like sharding and loot sharing. The first one could go either way for me really, although I am on the no shard side. But the latter I think is more critical that they have to address, so we don't see these scenarios where people get cheated out of loot because they don't bring any friends. I do think that their hearts are in the right place though, and I'm feeling really confident after that classic panel and Q&A. The decisions they made were sound to me, and it seems like they understand just what made Classic special. I said this in another video, but the most telling thing for me was that they confirmed the 16 debuff limit, formerly 8 until patch 1.7. Like I mentioned earlier, people noticed that there were unlimited debuffs in the demo, and they did later say in a panel that the 16 debuff limit was made for server stability, and it had such a huge effect on the endgame since you had to ration them. It's for such an arbitrary and unrelated reason, and it changed the whole rating composition for all of vanilla. But even still, that's how it was, so that's how it'll be for official classic, they said. If they're willing to replicate shoddy design like that, all for the sake of accuracy, it tells me a lot of just how dedicated they are to recreating an authentic experience. Another thing I wanted to talk about here is the release schedule, which was also shared in the panel. Let's just go over it here really quickly. Stage 1 is the Molten Core, Anixia, Diramal, Kazakh, and Azurgos. And for Stage 2 we have the Blackwing Lair, Battlegrounds, PvP Rewards, and Zulgarub. Stage 3 is Ankiraj with the opening event, Tier 5 Armor, Silithus content, and the Green Dragons. And stage 4, as you'd expect, is Nexramus and the Scourge Invasion. I think this is a good start. I mean, you could break it down to 12 stages if you wanted to, and include every little change, but it seems like they want to split it up between 4. I think maybe going for 6 to 8 stages would be a good middle ground. 
That way you could throw in Dire Maul, Kha'Zix, and Azurgos into their own stage since they were all 1.3.0. There are also some details I was wondering about. For the Molten Core, I assume that they mean the revamped Molten Core, right? At first, it dropped both Tier 1 and Tier 2, and they later took out Tier 2 with the exception of Ragnaros and saved it for the Blackwing Lair. So when they say the Molten Core here, I'm assuming it's the adjusted loot version, which I think should just be the launch version personally. I mean, like I said, you can break it down into a hundred different changes. What about the old Tier 2 models? Should those be the original at first, and then they're changed later? There's enough time to do whatever they want. Personally, I'm not sweating the little stuff like that, and there is a downside to be had with having 40 stages packed full of all of these random things that changed from release to 1.12. There's also a debate on how talents change since those were in different stages throughout these raids. Running the Molten Core with 1.12 talents would certainly make things easier. Although, I think now that everyone has had 14 years of experience, add-ons, and full video raid guides, talents are going to be the least of your concerns in terms of difficulty. But, if not for the sake of difficulty, just for the sake of accuracy and having that novelty of looking forward to patches. Like, oh my god, the Survival Hunter bleed talent got changed. So stuff like this definitely has more importance to me, and I think if they maybe had 6 stages, possibly 8, they'd have more freedom to fit in the smaller details such as talents and itemization. So, all this being said, the demo is classic World of Warcraft as I remember it. Weapon skills, old talents, the old world, spell ranks, hunter ammo, old graphics, and most importantly, the community. I was playing for a grand total of one hour, and I already made a friend who I quested with for a bit and just shot the breeze with. And this is what I'm talking about. Now, I do love the current game as well. I play it every day, but it's such a night and day experience to go from current to classic and see the difference between the communities. Having mob sharing, easy leveling, shared pickups, easy quests, dungeon finder, and so on is convenient, but it removes the need to interact with people. Other players are seen as mere obstacles to overcome, and it feels so far from a social experience. Even in the demo, random people who I don't know walk up to me and conjure me up some food, throw me some buffs, lend a hand if I get in trouble and aggro too much, and group up to finish quests faster. Aside from the latter, these acts of kindness don't give them experience or loot. They don't need incentives to be good to their fellow players because they know that, hey, it's tough and we're all here to help each other out. I timed it. These are all things that happened to me within three hours of leveling. I've had more random interactions with people in three hours of playing classic than I've had in three years of current. There's already a little community of people on my server here, of people that I recognize dueling away in Sentinel Hill, or talking in general chat. It's something I've missed in the game, and I gotta tell you, it's been such a refreshing experience to relive it, and in a tiny demo at that. I've been talking about this stuff for nearly four years now, and to be back in it, it's all of what I expected. It's been a great few days, and I can't wait until they start up the alphas and betas and whatnot, so we can leave the confines of Westfall and the Barrens. I think we'll get back to the normal scheme of things here now that BlizzCon is over. I mainly wanted to knock this one out because it's a time-sensitive thing with the demo ending soon. I was thinking of maybe making one more BlizzCon video just to talk about the convention as a whole and what I thought of it the highlights and lowlights and whatnot, but we'll see. Thanks for watching all of the videos. I'm really happy to have covered BlizzCon for a lot of you guys this year. I hope you're as excited as I am for what's to come in both classic and current, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.